Super excited to have Brian Applegarth with us today. He's the CEO of Enlightened Strategies, chair of the California Cannabis Tourism Association. He's an at-large board member of the California Travel Association where he chairs the Cannabis Tourism Committee and gives his time to the CTA's COVID-19 task force as well. Brian's also on the advisory board of the Dennis Perone Legacy Foundation, the Wine Industry Network, Weed and Wine Symposium. Now, under the guidance of Dennis Perone and Pebbles Tribbett, he put together a seminal list of cannabis pioneers, and he's charted California's cannabis history. But it's Brian's optimism, his enthusiasm, his down-to-earthedness that really attracted us to Brian's impacts in California. And as we bring forth our own pioneers and shine light on the path we're all on as cannabis patients, advocates, and consumers, we are privileged to get some of Brian's time now. Brian Applegar, thank you so much for taking time to tell us about your upcoming presentation during our Can Shift event on November 7th. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your presentation? Absolutely. Well, Brian, first off, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, thank you for that introduction. That was cool. I appreciate you touching on all those kind of <laughs> groups that I'm involved with. Um, so I've been working in cannabis tourism about six years, cannabis-related tourism. And the title of my presentation is going to be Cannabis Tourism, Opportunities, Issues, and Strategies. And it's really a harken back to the research that I did with MMGY Travel Intelligence over the past year that was a national study on the cannabis-motivated travel audience and what, what's their appetite for, what are their interests, what are their concerns. Um, and it really helped identify this unspoken to travel audience that goes hand in hand with, you know, the legalization of cannabis, both medically and adult use. Gotcha. That's fantastic. So um, folks that are interested in agritourism, diversified agriculture, tourism, people that are interested in cannabis, tourism, hemp, tourism, um, yep. sounds like everyone's probably going to benefit greatly. Um, the insights from that study, is that something that you're going to be covering some of the metrics or? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be kind of pulling some graphics and, and insights and slides from the, uh, from the report and showing you what we found. Um, my company, Enlightened, partnered with MMGY Travel Intelligence to kind of bring forth this much needed study. Um, because up to about a year ago, it was a lot about education. It still is. Um, but there was a need for data to really prove this audience and who they are. And what we learned is that they're very active travel, very active traveler. The, um, so yeah, we're going to get into the, the statistics, the data, the insights that we found. Um, we're going to make sense of the cannabis tourism audience and kind of share more about that. Um, we're also going to talk about cannabis related tourism opportunities, everything from hemp as a renewable resource and how it can raise the bar of sustainability in the travel and tourism industry. Um, to CBD and health and wellness. Um, you know, cannabis is really a plant that promotes well-being in a lot of ways, and it has for, for a long time in cultures throughout the world. So we're going to look at kind of that CBD wellness component, and we're also going to dive into the THC-rich um, kind of psychedelic travel. Is there a new kind of emerging segment there? What does it mean? How do you, how do you promote safety? Um, and how do you make sure that people have a great experience with it? And how will it fold in to travel? And probably more importantly is how is it folding in? You know, where I live in California, we're in our third year of adult use. Um, I've also worked with uh, different companies in different states, different regions that have more of a medical landscape. Um, so it's, it, it, the opportunities are really exciting, especially when you start thinking about the history and the culture, which are pillars of tourism and travel. I mean, and Hawaii specifically has this, um, looking at Kona Gold and Maui Waui and uh, the kind of the back to the land movement history with the Hawaiian locals um, and really kind of peeling back the opportunities of, that Hawaii has to really start thinking about how positioning cannabis related tourism um, to attract visitation and make sure that it's also in line with uh, the brand of, of Hawaii itself. That's fantastic. Yeah, and, and I know that we have quite a few folks in the tourism industry that may have never um, even talked about cannabis tourism that'll 
uh, mm-hmm. have access to the, the event and the videos. And so right. I, I, I hope this will really help us shift our awareness um, and, and really yeah. help us start to start to not, not just heal, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're on this healing path, but, but also to move into economics, you know, on a, on a bigger oh, yeah. scale, even, even if it's just small family farms that are getting involved initially, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we've opened the doors back up for travel. Uh, so we have thousands of people that are coming here already. Uh, mm-hmm. And if that goes well, then folks could probably get started right away in medical tourism. Yeah. There's ways to get started. I mean, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, the truth of the matter is right now with this new segment, it's, it's, it's a lot about just getting yourself educated, whether you're a cannabis brand, a dispensary, a hotel, or a DMO. It's getting educated on what is the cannabis related opportunity and who's the audience. So you can start wrapping your head around how are we going to market to and reach this audience and also serve this audience when they arrive in destination. So it's a normalized experience. There's also just risk mitigation plans. You know, I've worked with hotels where they're not interested in carrying product, but they are interested in the safety of their employees as well as their guests. And there's risk mitigation plans, developing SOPs to address a medically legal or an adult use legal landscape. It's part of good business, especially in hospitality, where the customer journey means something. So how is there a curated experience that's safe and that's on brand and that's exciting and that adds to the destination in a really, you know, authentic way, Uh, especially with the culture as rich and as seasoned in cannabis and hemp as Hawaii. I mean, it's, it's very, very exciting. You also have companies and organizations and hotels that, where's the revenue? Where's the incremental revenue? How can I sell an extra thing in the lobby shop? How can I have an in-room amenity? You know, also partnerships, like how do you partner and how do cannabis brands and establishments, they also need to understand what it means to be part of a tourism ecosystem and to have a seat at the table with with a plan that's kind of greater than themselves where all boats rise. Um, because that is a different model. I mean, case in point, one of the, the study that we did with MMGY Travel Intelligence, you know, we found that of this cannabis motivated travel audience, which by the way, is 29% of all the active leisure travelers in the US, 29% of them qualify as a cannabis motivated traveler. And 30% of that audience have never tried cannabis. They're also not very interested in inhalation or smoke. So the fear that hotels have about having inhalation on property, that's, not, that's a non-issue when coming up with a tourism plan if you decide to actually cater to it in a way above and beyond risk mitigation and education. So we're going to dive into all this. We're going to look at cannabis tourism, cannabis-related tourism. We're going to go specific. We're going to have kind of some specific touch points on Hawaii's opportunity as well as the medical landscape and how much opportunity there is just with that as well as being able to prepare for the adult use kind of inflection point, should that come to pass for, uh, for Hawaii. And I'm really honored to be a part of it. Thank you for, uh, thank you for inviting me in, Brent. I'm excited to do this on the 7th. Well, thank you so much. You know, as, as you know, the, the cannabis trail that you pioneered uh, winds through Hawaii also, and looking forward to hearing about that. Some of our OGs are going to be super excited to uh, see your, your work in that area. And, we're, yeah. we're truly blessed to, to be able to just attract uh, talent like yours to, to really shift our awareness and, and get, us, get us on a path. And, and right now, we, we seem to be a little bogged down on our medical cannabis tourism path. So thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for, for participating. And mm-hmm. uh, for everyone that uh, doesn't know yet, the event is going to be November 7th. It's called mm-hmm. Can Shift. And uh, we're donating proceeds to the Hawaii Patients Union. And we'll have about 10 presenters. The, the schedule is shifting almost daily as new presenters come on and um, time slots are, are chosen. And uh, we'll have those updated at hawaiicannabis.org for anyone that wants to check in the latest schedule. We will get started at about 8.45 a.m. on November 7th. And, if folks want to learn more um, 
about you and about your efforts. I know there's a lot of great links on your site that point to the work that you've done. And is brianapplegarth.com a, a good starting point for someone that wants to contact you or, or learn more about your efforts? It is, yeah. That's Brian with an I and then apple like the fruit, Garth like Garth Brooks, brianapplegarth.com. And I've got all my work on there. Um, in addition to tourism and travel, I'm very passionate about the history and culture. You you mentioned the Cannabis Trail, which is a, a, a nonprofit that I've, uh, I'm very excited about and I do spearhead. Um, and it's all about really creating a piece of tourism infrastructure that celebrates the history and the culture of the cannabis legacy and the movement. And I'm, I'm very excited to share more about that. Also, I've been very involved in the Appalachian conversation in California. So I'd I'm looking forward to sharing more about the cannabis Appalachians of California and what that means um, and how that's really going to help tourism thrive and create a whole new platform um, to talk about kind of the cannabis experience. Yeah, that's going to be a really great uh, segue into or from uh, Dr. Holly Hall's presentation on Appalachians and oh, nice. in the California Appalachians program. So I'm super excited about that as well. And great. sounds like it's all coming together. I, Thank you yeah. so much for, for being available. Yeah, thanks, Brian. I look forward to it. I'll see you guys on the 7th of November. Okay, aloha. Aloha.